Hi, Krishna Raj. Good evening. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? I'm good. Yeah, I would like to tell you my plight uh, sure. regarding what's going on. So I'll give you a bit of a background of uh, who I am and what I do and how did I get into this particular situation. Sure. I'm an NRI. Sometime last year in uh, October, I came to Mumbai uh, because I have my business here and to operate that, I have to travel to and fro. Due to the uh, border closures, lockdowns and the ongoing situation with the pandemic, I was unable to fly back mm. to the country I came from. Hence, I rented out an apartment in Goregao. Mm. And since the day I moved in, it's been a nightmare. Uh, I'm a bachelor, mm. 28. The basic issue over mm. here is they don't want bachelors or spinsters. Bachelors or just, bachelor boys or bachelor girls? No, okay. not allowed. They want to dictate their own terms. They want to rule this as their own kingdom. Hmm. Hmm. Basically, they just want us out of this particular premises. So they try to create certain issues and try to defame us and put uh, false allegations, such as, oh, you have friends coming over who are like females and um, you probably must be running like a prostitution racket or... Oh my. Okay. Drug trafficking. I, I know it. It sounds very ridiculous. Mm. And to support these claims, there are absolutely no proofs provided from the RN. And to be honest, something of this sort does not happen at all. Mm. Hence, there are no proofs in the first place. Mm. But it's very disturbing. It's very haunting. I mean, as a tenant. Uh, so they uh, they directly accused you of uh, running a prostitution racket. Is it? Yeah, so basically they called the owner of this particular flat, uh, mm. who apparently is a family friend, and we have very old relations with them, and they know my family, they know me personally, and uh, he knows my background, what I do for work, and all of that sort. So they were narrating the episodes to him, so that's that's what they narrated to him, that uh, you there must be trafficking or prostitution, girls come over, at all hours and these girls go on changing and yeah those sort of allegations so different girls come over at odd hours that's basically yes. their thing yes and also they have given this in writing mm. uh, to the flat owner mm. and they have um, made this available for other people as well oh you mean they I, put it on the notice board or something is it not on the notice board because uh, they don't have a notice board. Okay. But they have this uh, letter on their letterhead, hmm. uh, which is available if anyone wants to have a look at it. Hmm. And uh, these all are like the original, the residents of the Corporate Housing Society. So hmm. it's available to that particular circle okay. in this particular building. Yeah. So, so did they specify you, specify your name, or uh, specify the flat now? How did they do that? What did they do? So they have Can you read it? Would you read the letter? Is it handy? Yes, I shall read it for you. Okay. So the subject is misuse of your flat or your brother-in-law, so okay. which is uh, incorrect. Okay. They so, thought you are his brother-in-law. Yeah. Okay. So, dear sir, we committee members have noticed that in your flat number so-and-so, there are boys who are staying, and as you have said, they are your brother-in-law, okay? Mm -hmm. We do not allow any flat rental to bachelors or any of the owner's relatives who are bachelors, and if so, we collect their details, which will match their surname. Okay. Uh, it has been noticed that at around 11.30, night two girls visit frequently and after 40 to 45 minutes, they leave the premises. It has also been noticed that these girls go on changing. So it's our duty to inform you before taking any legal action. And this has been signed by the secretary, the chairman and the treasurer. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. interesting. Also, they have put up uh, these bones outside the society saying that uh, no bachelors uh, should be allowed. You should only consider family members and uh, married couples. Uh, also, the another for, for, is, for selling your flat to or for uh, renting purposes. Okay. Also, they do not allow car parks 
to even if it's there in the agreement the rental agreement they mm-hmm. say uh you shouldn't be parking a car if you have uh, if you're a tenant or if you've rented out a property to uh, a third party mm-hmm. so basically they just want to create a situation where a person is frustrated and leaves the society and mm-hmm. uh, this is the way they harass you they just want to maybe defame you mm. and uh, put false accusations so even the owners are like oh we have to maintain a relationship with these people in the future otherwise getting an noc would be a problem for them mm. Mm. when we approach the owners even owners want to keep quiet and not do much about it mm. this is not just the case with uh, this particular society it's uh, generally observed in most of the societies across mumbai that's true which is uh, very much uncomfortable like for a bachelor or a spinster uh, to adjust and if these people are not supportive if they're not supportive because these people they leave their houses or they come from different areas and right. mostly uh, they come here to work or to study or yeah to just to experience a new city and this is the kind of treatment they experience it's not good it does not encourage people to sad that sad that, that this is uh, the way it is in mumbai i uh, i agree i have spoken to others also and last year during the pandemic i spoke to a lady I mentored a lady through her troubles she was a female right. doctor mm-hmm. living alone uh, earlier living with her mother they seemed to think that that her mother living with her was some kind of an essential condition although this lady is approaching 40 mm-hmm. they said we thought you are living with your mother now you are living alone we carried out a long correspondence with this uh, managing committee saying whether i live with my mother or whether i live alone is very much my concern how is Absolutely. it your concern hmm. and uh, are you being a chaperone or are you being a moral police so there is this kind of a phobia i i don't think it's a legitimate phobia i think it's more of a right wing sentiment mm-hmm. and this runs through our uh, there is a culture it's a kind of a subculture among the society's managing committee mm-hmm. so generally on a one to one level everybody is quite broad minded and uh, normal human beings but in the moment you have a managing committee they start acting like a khap panchayat right and they seem to assume powers which they don't have mm-hmm. they start assuming powers to tell you how to live your life they start assuming powers uh, as to you know you can't eat non veg or does this person eat non veg we can't have him here or you know you should not rent out your house to a muslim mm-hmm. uh, and so on and so forth or a catholic or, and so on and so forth it gets the list can just keep going on and on and of course uh, single men and single women also t- are in the gun sites you should not rent your house to single men single women and the generalization is we have got a moral fabric in the society and it is a very high moral fabric we are all very good people and somebody will come along and start uh, if it's a single woman she will bring boyfriends at all hours of day and night and in fact uh, if she comes late sometimes happens that women also come late from work why is she coming at 11:30 in the night uh, they start acting like they are the wardens of girls hostels mm-hmm. it is completely ridiculous and you can counter it actually it is quite easy to counter if you are up to fighting it one of the easy ways of fighting it is call it out right go public make it known to everybody because this is a privately engaged kind of an activity they can't really uh, defend this activity so if you just call it out that would help a lot engage in correspondence with them under which law are you saying are you able to say that i may not be a bachelor i may not be a, a single woman mm-hmm. i may not for that matter bring friends to my house and for that matter whether the single women or men who visit me stay over or not how is it a concern of yours in what way are you empowered 
to ensure my virginity or my chastity you know so i think one needs to really gobsmack them with it being subtle doesn't help because they try to spread this smear campaign oh there was this man who came to your house and he stayed over he was there till late at night i mean they don't seem to get that they have no jurisdiction whatsoever about what you do within your house absolutely zero jurisdiction for that matter not only within even outside for that matter for example suppose you have a female friend you are a tenant you are not a second class citizen in fact i would love to do this along with you know with reference to cooperative society bylaws and rules and all those things but i don't want to go there because it gets very technical and once it starts sounding technical it's uh, not very interesting so i will tell say it in plain language you are a tenant mm-hmm. by paying rent and being accepted as a tenant by your landlord whatever your terms are between the two of you you have inherited for for the period of your tenancy you have virtually stepped into your landlord's shoes unless agreed otherwise between you and your landlord you virtually stepped into his shoes every right that he enjoys each and every right that he enjoys you should enjoy by virtue of being a tenant in that house so for example parking you talked about parking yeah outside a parking you are not an outsider you are a tenant in that house that house comes with its appurtenant parking mm-hmm. you have a 100% right to use the parking that is appurtenant to that house mm-hmm. further if you require if you are calling over a guest the society has guest parkings you may have a guest overnight just like your landlord just like any other owner if you have a guest overnight if you have one person two person 20 person staying over at your house for one day two days it does not matter it is none of their business unless you are doing something that will cause them to uh, you know engage with you such as banging noises you know something that suggests that you are hurting the structure of the building excessive noise in the corridors something along those lines if that happens a lot then maybe they have some cause again that is i'm still saying maybe because they have to approach it with caution they have to approach their rights with caution because they don't have the rights they are off limits managing committee members office bearers who seem to think that it is their little kingdom it is not their kingdom they are there to maintain the structure of the society to run the services to pay the watchman to make sure that the water and everything is you know the done properly it comes you know pay the taxes pay the water bills and so on okay basically run services for the society that is their purpose explicitly little bit more one may say is to impose reasonable rules to maintain some normalcy and order but very reasonable equal to everybody yani it it cannot be one set of rules for tenants and another set of rules for owners no such thing or one set of rules for uh, hindus and another set of rules for muslims you know muslims may not live here muslims should not eat here you know you, uh, nonsense complete nonsense we should know you should not have non veg here you should not have uh, fish here or eggs here bullshit complete bullshit they cannot do that you know they are off limits they are completely off limits and it is a criminal activity for them to be doing all that and if you catch them on video in fact i'll recommend this i'm sorry to go off on a tirade like this if you can catch them on a video like if you can switch on your video and let them have that conversation with you you know confront them where they are either accusing you or preventing you themselves like preventing you from bringing your uh, driving your car into the premises or preventing your guests from coming in or leaving or whatever interfering with your guests 
in any form or through the watchman doing these activities even if the watchman does it okay if the watchman says saab ne bola hai andar nahi jaane dene ka saab ne bola hai gaadi andar nahi lana hai you know, you know chairman saab ne bola hai secretary saab ne bola hai, any of those things if you get them on video there will be a police case against them for unlawful restraint and unlawful restraint is a serious offense it is not it's not a child's matter and all of them jointly and severally even if one office bearer has made this mistake they are jointly and severally responsible as a managing committee so the entire managing committee may have an fir against them now their only silver lining is that police usually doesn't like to interfere in these matters and police may try to shrug and say no no ye to cooperative ka matter hai and all that not true and if you were to press the matter if you were to sort of uh, persist in the face of some resistance nominal resistance from police and if you take it up to, to the magistrate there will be an fir against them and it's a serious matter and if they say things like he is running a call girl racket or anything anything unless they are 100% sure about what they are talking about and they can bring proof actual proof it doesn't mean women going in and out you may have 20 women friends coming and going unless they are damn sure and can prove that these women are actually prostitutes and can prove that you are running a racket sitting at home they will be in deep trouble just because you you got women going in and out does not entitle them to make that uh, that allegation it will not be enough to you know save them from an fir also being a woman it's a very unpleasant uh, experience if uh, somebody puts you in that category yeah looking at them i would say staring or passing lewd remarks it's absolutely not uh, tolerated hmm true true so you know if you wish to um counter this kind of behavior which makes you feel singled out makes you feel awkward makes your friends feel awkward when they come to your house and so on i would highly recommend writing it all down in detail incident wise you should by the way when you are writing a, a complaint it should be an incident report you know you should report incident on such and such a day on such and such a time so and so gentleman was with me and this happened or this person came to my house this lady came to my house this couple came to my house and then this happened and this is what these guys did you know that kind of a thing as far as possible with time and everything make an incident report send it to police commissioner names and all email mm-hmm. send it to police commissioner keep these guys in the copy they will suddenly realize that what they are doing is not defensible you know correct this all this works as long as they feel that they can do it in the anonymity of their building where they are that tiny little kingdom where they are uh, the kings mm-hmm. escalate it you will start to see the uh, changes happen that is one thing of course there are some very hard boiled characters and you really need to fight them to the nail and it won't be very easy you'll have to be tough with them you'll have to shout them down you need to do that also from time to time you really need to be able to shout people down and you really need to be a tough guy around them so not not something we look forward to but you need to do it all the same mm-hmm. and just for making myself very clear on this on your right just for the sake of discussion if you were to actually get a call girl to your house okay or a consenting adult let's forget about call girl consenting adult they have absolutely no jurisdiction whatsoever just as you have a married couple and married couple has sex and society has nothing to do with it whether they have sex once a day or once a week or once a month it doesn't it doesn't concern them at all same way 
you as i said you have every right if a married couple brings in a you know invites a woman home the society doesn't know whether they are having a threesome or she is just a you know a friend the society doesn't know and the society has no jurisdiction for moral policing in the same way or for that matter if a woman invites a female friend home she might be a lesbian for all you know how do you know that if a guy invites a guy friend home he might be gay for all you know how do you know that so what are you talking about what is your business you have no business within the four walls of his house your jurisdiction ends where his door begins and it strictly ends you can do whatever you like you know you really need to sort of uh, stop being nice and goody goody around these people so i realize your landlord may not want to do that if your landlord supports you then you can absolutely go all out on these guys and this is in fact for being guys it's kind of easier it's tougher for a woman who's living alone to say that listen if i have a male friend over tera kya jata hai it's tougher for them to do it because there's so much uh, stigma attached to women you know single women so right but they have to do it they have to be very much in their face tera kya jata hai be Mm-hmm. you know you need to do that you need to and people and women if women get tough particularly women if women get angry and get tough to kon hota hai you know that kind of language right people will back down they will immediately back down if women write a complaint of harassment harassment doesn't have to be sexual harassment harassment is harassment right you know if you are doing something which you are not allowed to under normal uh, you know normal uh, rules of conduct in a civil society mm-hmm. it is harassment so if a chairman is questioning a tenant on what she does whom she meets whom she brings home that's harassment moral policing is harassment correct it's very important to address uh, these issues and to know what our rights are as a tenant or as a bachelor or a spinster it's uh, very important and uh, thanks for addressing this particular issue people should really raise a voice and basically form a unity and uh, speak about it absolutely. against it absolutely absolutely there is absolutely no basis for a cooperative housing society even if acha one more interesting thing mm-hmm. sometimes these guys will be able to claim that uh, a, a resolution was passed by the general body okay. mm-hmm. even if an a resolution was passed by the general body that resolution by the general body is unlawful any resolution that curtails your individual freedoms your right to life and liberty is unlawful intrinsically unlawful and even if these guys incited the entire general body to pass a resolution saying no bachelors or bachelors should not be allowed to bring female friends home or female tenants should come home before 11 o'clock you know they pass these kind of nonsensical uh, uh, resolutions you can still take them on in a court and i guarantee you that you are more likely to win you are most likely to win not more you, you will be upheld and it is a public cause people will thank you for it if you have an occasion to file a case mm-hmm. you know a good reason to file a case by all means do it police case karo unke upar they will come down to their knees mr rao uh, would is there a body which governs all these things and if there is a bachelor who is facing such an issue where can he approach if you try to approach it as a cooperative society problem right then you should approach the registrar and so on and so forth but they are not an appropriate forum for this mm-hmm. and the reason they are not an appropriate forum is because as tenants 
you are not really members of the cooperative society if this is happening to a member then maybe that person may approach the registrar okay like if there is a female who is a bachelor a bachelor girl who's staying in a society and faces discrimination then there may be some cause and some basis for approaching the registrar if the discrimination is very visible and something like that but even then i think cooperative department cooperation department is not an appropriate forum for this kind of topics okay maybe if it comes to parking etc maybe some that may be some reason to approach them but generally speaking i think you should approach the police now you may say is there a specialized body other than police right there is no such association or union that i know of but as an individual i think you have, you should exercise the power of one or you may network with people now there are some areas where networking helps i'll give you an example cooperative societies i know this because i am a pet owner i my children are very fond of uh, animals so we have lots of cats and we have a dog okay and now i know that if i were a tenant i would go through endless amounts of harassment even as an owner i go through pretty stiff resistance but i i go through the resistance because i know my rights tenants are told you cannot have a cat or a dog if you have a pet dog we will not take you you should not be allowed as admitted as a tenant and so on and so forth mm-hmm. the animal lovers can come together and network networking they can assist each other they can assist each other they can mentor each other the rules and the laws of the land support them mm-hmm. they support them 100% okay So if a person has cats dogs anything he is humane basically if he is not breaking any laws of the land right the laws of the land support you the constitution supports you and there are very articulate animal welfare board of india circulars and supreme court pronouncements and so on mm-hmm. all of which supports people who feed animals animal feeders are who are people who get into a lot of trouble dog feeders are people who get into a lot of trouble you know are tum idhar kutte ko kyun khilate ho raat bhar bhogta hai you got all these kind of things people with children sometimes get into trouble so your children are playing too loudly this happens if your managing committee members are aged and crotchety you know they don't know what it's like to live around children so they start saying are bachche log khelte hain and that can turn into an issue right so people one is they can support each other they can form support groups you need not be explicit even friend circles are enough mm-hmm. and wherever these guys step out of line which is basically impose unlawful restraint Mm-hmm. or do something that amounts to harassment mm-hmm. immediately file a harassment complaint right now i am sorry to say that there are no specialized uh, bodies and uh, that may be because politics enters wherever you form such bodies it's difficult to maintain such bodies in a very clean and clear way there are some specialist lawyers however Mm-hmm. who take up this kind of cases there are animal lawyers for example animal loving lawyers mm-hmm. who will immediately take up a case against a society mm-hmm. and there are some animal loving there some animal activists are also there i am not very clear about what they do or don't do they are there i am not i am not very fond of them either because they sometimes take the fight on a tangent so mm-hmm. there is no bachelor or single person kind of a forum it's not there mm-hmm. i don't know if it would help uh, because power of one is sometimes quite adequate but if you think they are necessary for moral support then uh, maybe you should take a step forward and try to form something true true probably that would help yeah.
you know Absolutely. you should do it you should do it it's not there not to the best of my knowledge there it's not there you are perfectly right harassment is rampant and uh, harassment can get more and more rampant with for example you are a single woman you are a single woman who is a doctor a professional a working professional you are a single woman and you are attractive and you are a doctor you know oh you are attractive my gosh they go all over the place they they straight away think that you are sleeping your way to the top mm-hmm. you know they will draw conclusions based on your looks and they will also hypocritically do also try to you know some talk suggestively or there will be guys who will want sexual favors it can turn very sleazy the same people will turn around and say that oh she is sleeping around she has man for men friends this prudishness has no place in mumbai culture definitely not in any metropolis has no place at all it should not have a place anywhere in india but definitely it has no place in uh, a place like mumbai right you know and people should be very upfront about it for example boys and girls who are friends in societies mm-hmm. may be shamed there were some incidents recently around where i live a boy and a girl were sitting at a be- you know on a bench and having a chat it may have been a late hour maybe 11 30 12 at night but uh, hey it's a free society so they were sitting and having a chat and suddenly this man comes up to them he's a society managing committee guy and he tells the boy where are you from are you from this building now the boy it so happens wasn't from that building he was from a neighboring building why are you sitting here so late he that boy was taken aback he went home the girl of course went home to her mom and her dad fortunately her mom supported this girl her mom was very clear about what was right and wrong in this matter so the next day there was this uh, situation where she literally called that guy out like she was downstairs i think he must be in the second floor third floor something like that she stood downstairs and called him like come down come down i want to talk to you and then she really ticked him off in public he was a managing committee member she ticked him off in public she says listen she is my daughter if anyone has anything to say to her i have it you have no business telling her who she has to sit with when she has to sit so don't you dare raise your voice to her again and that was the right thing for her to do you know absolutely so she did that the mother did that it was even it was very embarrassing at first the guy tried to he fumbled around looking for a defense he tried to make some excuse he tried to blame that boy she said nothing doing absolutely nothing doing she was having none of it mm-hmm. and uh, ultimately the guy just backed down and uh, re- retreated in shame he, in fact some of his supporters also came out and tried to step in but uh, the the mother really give solid support to her daughter and now that's the way to go absolutely that's the that's how it should be that's how it should be so same thing for bachelors they should stand together they should support each other even bachelors bachelor men bachelor women i prefer not to use the word spinster because spinster has this association of you know old infertile hack sort of thing a bachelor man and a bachelor woman is how i look at it mm-hmm. so and even if they have sexual relations with they have friends over with whom they have sex here so bloody what it's their house it is not the landlord's house while they are paying rent it is their house mm-hmm. they shouldn't have to go looking for oyo rooms if they have got a proper house where they are a tenant they shouldn't have to go looking for oyo rooms to have sex in so this is something we sh- we need to stop being coy about you know there's no question of being uh, pussyfooting around this topic right as a tenant you have 100% of the rights not even 1% less than the owner not even 1% less mm-hmm. so even if the owner says so you still don't have it unless it is an explicit part of your agreement and you have with full knowledge and consent you have signed something where you have said 
okay i will not park my car in the society something like that even there even your landlord has no right to say you should not entertain friends in my house etc he has no right and if he said it and you signed under duress because you needed a room and then you brought a friend she cannot enforce that part of your contract because you know what that part of your contract is illegal and unconstitutional so he cannot enforce it so then if you did go and bring a girlfriend into the house and that girlfriend did spend time in your house no problem absolutely no problem try and stop me mm-hmm. try and stop me if the guy if you have the gumption to go to court you will win if he makes the mistake of taking you to court he will lose mm-hmm. the landlord will lose right that is the constitutional structure you know mm-hmm. that is the structure of india it is not uh, india is not this right wing country where they can uh, do moral policing no way uh would you recommend what is the first step if you experience something of this nature happening to you first step create evidence first step is have the presence of mind to switch on your mobile phone switch on your video start recording ideally don't make the person aware that you are recording later on if he becomes aware not a problem ah, let me also make this very clear video recording because people feel guilty they feel guilty are or they are made to feel guilty hey you are recording how dare you record recording is not a crime recording a phone call or recording an event with your video recorder is not a crime okay more particularly it is not a crime if it is being done in a public space and someone is publicly taking a stance in his capacity as chairman secretary office bearer watchman or a society busy body someone is doing this the this thing and assaulting you or shouting at you or shaming your guests or doing any of those things right right or security man is preventing you from bringing your car because you are a tenant or tenant's guest whatever is possible for other people should be possible to you if they try to do anything out of that that ordinary by all means number 1 record with your video recorder first step right second step create audio evidence by phoning having conversations they should be made to repeat their arguments whatever and they should you should get them to confirm their action so phone them talk to them in the phone recording the name of the person should be clear the designation should be clear so you should in a conversation you should say something like uh, let us say there is a chap called mr singh so you say mr singh as chairman of whatever society you are not within your rights to do this so what you have done is you have established the identity of the other guy you know so you talk this way and establish that guy's identity and further establish that he did what he is accused of doing which is prevented you mm-hmm. mr singh i told you that you i had informed you that i am having guests we have ample guest parking yet you are not allowing my guests to park in the guest parking which is available this is unlawful mr singh do you know this you know this is the tone and tenor you should maintain and you should sort of tell him the law on this tell him listen you do not have any jurisdiction any rights to do this so you should inform him you should have a phone conversation now this creates evidence especially if he argues with you and uh, he doesn't he accepts his actions and tries to justify them it will create evidence so you create as much evidence as possible you call the secretary you call the treasurer you call the chairman you call everybody Mm-hmm. have a proper phone conversation right record them okay now you have built up evidence now on the strength of all this evidence you then write an email mr singh there was this incident or to the managing committee of so and so society jointly and severally please be informed that on such and such a date there was this incident number 1 number 2 number 3 number 4 number 5 
please show cause why i should not prosecute now these guys will generally try to justify their actions especially if they are not properly guided if they are guided properly then their lawyer will say boss this is non maintainable you can't do this back down mm-hmm. okay shut up and apologize he is now going to the law you will not be able to support this if they are properly guided they will stand down but suppose they don't stand down if they are improperly guided or if they are not guided at all then they will usually justify it some more so they may give even further details about their activity which is brilliant for you which is excellent for you so you take the case you take your notice you take their reply to your notice you you know you carry out correspondence if possible another once or twice you build up a body of correspondence say 3 4 emails back and forth you stay very clean clear civil within your rights and stand firm on your right if further incident happens let it happen trigger it actually trigger it like for instance you know they are going to uh, jump on you if uh, you come in late or if you come in with a female friend just warn you warn your female friend that she should not chicken out so you come in with a female friend and the watchman stops you and says chairman sir ne bola hai aapko nahi andar jaane dene ka you say what do you mean i am a tenant here in room number so and so mm-hmm. young lady keeps quiet she is a guest your guest and she says he says oh you are not allowed to bring her what do you mean she is my guest mm-hmm. what do you mean recording so now you got a second incident so the more incidents that they do the more they will get into trouble right and you will why should document everything that is yes. happening step by step absolutely whether it's telephonic conversation whether absolutely. it's a video recording absolutely or uh, any sort of email exchange absolutely or, uh, absolutely and as a as a kind of an emergency sos mm-hmm. call phone 100 phone 100 because it's a recorded line mm-hmm. at uh, police commissioner's office phone 100 explain the whole thing to them tell them what's happening this is sos in case you also need to actually they are physically preventing you mm-hmm. so do all of the above like record and then also phone 100 and tell them they are stopping me from getting in right now mm-hmm. please send beat marshals mm-hmm. what will happen is within about 15 20 minutes or half an hour depending on where you are located beat marshals will come to your house or come to that neighborhood and they will say what is going on here and a record will be created okay of whatever happened again keep your mobile on record the whole thing sometimes okay i'm just giving this a advance warning sometimes the cops don't seem to be aware of the law themselves so they will say what can we do it is a society matter even if they are not allowing you to take your lady friend it's a society matter they can do that they they occasionally do that you need to persist with them and reason with them see i am living here this is my house i am a tenant but this is my house okay it is not somebody else's house it is my house i have a guest these guys have already embarrassed me in front of this guest they are not allowing my guest to come inside i will come down to the police station and register a complaint tomorrow for fir and i will also state that you are present what is your name you ask the officer his name what is your name what is your name usually they will see the light of day they will now stand behind you and they will talk to the society guys the society guys you no know, sir then come to the police station yeah mm-hmm. so you should be um able to create a ruckus the ability to create a ruckus is an important thing it should never be forgotten right in the name of being decent folks and all that we sometimes forget that we need to sometimes create a ruckus तो डिसेंसी बराबर है बट एबिलिटी टू रकस इज ऑल्सो इम्पोर्टेंट 
sometimes we want to be private about our lives and uh, everything but whenever it's uh, required yeah i think we should uh, question if something is not happening right absolutely absolutely Because you need to do it doing job. that to you they can yeah. do it to anyone tomorrow so if you're suffering they develop the confidence to do that to the other members absolutely absolutely yeah so the ability to take them to task publicly uh, you usually don't prefer to do that but you need to be doing that from time to time and they should know that you have that ability right you know it is important again this uh, is even more important for women because bachelor women face lot more discrimination lot more slut shaming mm-hmm. you know are dekho dekho kaise kapde pehen ki jati hai now practically anything that she wears if she is attractive will go against her and they will say she is uh, a slut mm-hmm. you know now whether she is a slut or not is none of their business that is where she needs to be coming from she doesn't have to establish her niceness with these guys mm-hmm. no it's none of your business boss it's it's my business i am a private citizen i do what i want within the four walls of my house and it is my house mm-hmm. yeah. so people who have taken a tough stand usually can survive in mumbai right. and uh, people who take a soft stand get they live by the whims and fancies of these uh, khap panchayats then mm-hmm. so as i was saying you create all this evidence mm-hmm. and then you you escalate the matter to police commissioner local police station also mm-hmm. email they are quite responsive by the way they are also responsive on twitter okay so if you were to tweet this notice or this letter or something you know mm-hmm. or the incident the police responds very quickly on twitter mm-hmm. if these guys are getting in your face and preventing you from just living the way you want it is your house while you are there you come at what time you want you go at what time you want you drive around at what time you whatever time you want you have boyfriends and girlfriends if that is what it is okay mm-hmm. you dress the way you want true as long as you are within the boundaries of normal social etiquette mm-hmm. i don't think i mean wearing shorts or wearing mini skirts is not outside mumbai's normal social social etiquette mm-hmm. or dressing attractively is not outside mumbai's normal social etiquette if somebody else has a has difficulties with that that's their problem not yours mm-hmm. so you don't have to worry about that you can exactly live your life the way you want uh, some boundaries may get crossed only if you make too much noise play music too loud have a dance party in your house or something like that then maybe you'll mm-hmm. cross some boundaries then they have to call the police true but other than that if you're doing something quietly in your house mm-hmm. there are no business for instance suppose you have friends who's come come over and stay the night and play cards with you mm-hmm. or sleep with you for that matter whatever it is it is not their business mm-hmm. so if you if you're woken up late in the night because you have friends staying over and the watchman comes or a bunch of people come this sometimes happens to people you know they'll be woken up in the night and they'll feel yellow corn eh start recording immediately first thing is start recording yes gentlemen what is the problem who are you i am the secretary of this society who oh, you are the secretary of this society is it why have you come to my house who are these people how does it concern you why are they staying with you they are my friends how does it concern you this is my house no no this is not your house no bloody right this is my house i am i am a tenant here does not mean this is not my house while i am a tenant this is my house how does it concern you mm-hmm. you know make them back down and of course your friends should have tough skin they should not be very easy to scare off but if you say this is my house damn it 
if i am not within the four walls of the law within the boundaries of the law you go file a complaint do what you want but be careful i will sue you for defamation if you say anything that you can't prove be very careful i'll take down your entire managing committee be careful what you are saying about me they are my friends they are staying here overnight what's your problem right so this is the kind of assertiveness you need to bring into this <laughs> this is my lifestyle who are you to dictate to me what is my lifestyle as much as religion is a lifestyle you know we don't you cannot interfere with somebody in their matters of religion what he wears whether his wife wears a burqa or not or whether he eats non veg or not this is a lifestyle decision i eat non veg yes it is given to me it's a right given to me by my constitution right to life and liberty my dignity is safeguarded by the constitution you have no right to enter into my privacy how i am living whether i have friends over none of your business so that's that's where you need to be coming from really <laughs> if you're tough so the law supports you yeah you know you i think uh, given a complete idea about how to deal with the situation uh, yeah. what to do when to do uh, whom to approach uh, what number to contact and uh, how is police going to help in this particular situation and Absolutely. their involvement in it uh it's actually a very uh, an informative uh, subject and, and we obviously don't know because there's not much of an information available online online or any handbook available uh but uh, if somebody has to refer to their rights as a tenant of what is the quickest way they can find out uh, online or is there any support system uh, where no. they can get this information um, there are a few people who are authorities on this topic i won't claim authority but i would claim exposure or uh, experience there is another gentleman by the name of uh, ramesh prabhu who right. is an expert on housing matters mm-hmm. okay ca ramesh prabhu he runs an outfit called maharashtra society's welfare association it's a good forum to understand the boundaries of the law where cooperative societies are concerned so whether a managing committee is authorized to take a certain action can be understood with reference to maharashtra cooperative societies act rules bylaws etc mm-hmm. if one needs to do that okay as i said that is not really a domain for fighting these kinds of things but occasion may arise when you need to uh, go with reference to what is the cooperative act saying okay then i think ramesh prabhu is a good chap to contact mm-hmm. extremely busy man finds it very difficult to give you undivided time but still very well intentioned and he will give it to you so this is something you can do he is a great resource he is an amazing resource mm-hmm. and he also has lawyers by the way he has a panel of lawyers it is possible that he may be a little soft in terms of uh, managing committee and all that but even so generally you will get a good idea about what the law says and he i think he would agree with me on this that managing committees have no authority in this sort of thing none whatsoever and even if the general body and even if wrong bylaws have been framed so let let me take this one step further suppose a society has gone and framed wrong bylaws illegal bylaws okay intrinsically illegal bylaws such as oh you can't rent your house to bachelors or single women okay or tenants should always return home before 1 o'clock or before 11 o'clock 11 pm or or you know this kind of thing they may they may frame these bylaws and uh, by a show of hands and a resolution at a, an agm or sgm they may pass idiotic resolution but even if bylaws exist the reason i'm telling you this is sometimes you will have people saying oh the bylaws are sacred no they are not 
they are not sacred the general body's resolution is sacred no it is not if it falls foul of the constitution and it falls foul of existing laws that are there for protecting people such as unlawful restraint then that bylaw will fall by the wayside it has to be discarded if it's an unlawful action even if there's a bylaw it will not save the uh, managing committee so if there is unlawful restraint now let me just explain unlaw unlawful restraint stopping you from parking your vehicle in the parking which is appurtenant to your flat is unlawful restraint if the watchman comes and says you are not to be allowed in unlawful restraint if the watchman comes and says sir please tell your guests to leave unlawful restraint if the chairman or secretary themselves turn up at your door with or without a mob unlawful restraint unlawful restraint and harassment they are stepping into very dangerous waters they may not know it they may think they are on the right side they are very badly on the wrong side they will step into boiling waters if they do this unlawful restraint is it is a little known part of the law but it is a very essential part of the law and it's an indian penal code section just google it you'll find it basically anybody who stops you from doing whatever you are allowed to do in a normal life will find himself being charged with unlawful restraint if they enter into your house by the way you are a tenant right yes if they enter into your house and you ask them to get out and they don't and you have evidence of that and they make any misadventure like trying to vacate you forcefully or trying to vacate your guest forcefully any misadventure will result in an extremely serious charge called house trespass and believe you me it is an extremely serious charge sida fir ho jayega it is non bailable they will have to run for getting anticipatory bail and if they don't they will find themselves behind bars extremely serious you say get out they say we will not or they they don't react promptly enough if they if they have a sense of danger they should immediately leave not spend one minute more so your rights are absolute you are a tenant but your rights are very strong and while you are in possession okay let me go one step even one step further you got 11 months right you are you are you have an 11 months agreement now let us say 12 months have elapsed and your landlord decides that mai isko khali karwa dunga and he sends in a bunch of tough guys who may from be who may not be from the society or who may be from the society now let us understand the position you are in possession of the flat okay you are in actual physical possession of the flat you are not giving peaceful possession of the flat to your landlord he tries to evict you by using force he may not know it but he is getting into dangerous waters because the same house trespass case which can be made against the society can be made against your landlord and if your landlord tries to prevent you from exercising any right such as bringing your guest suppose your landlord stands in your way of bringing a guest okay and he is foolhardy enough to allow you let you know get video recorded doing that preventing your guest from coming into your house your house while you are in possession he will be in trouble unlawful restraint it will not help that he is the owner of that house it will not even help him if you have not paid him rent it will not help him because rent oh that's a different proceeding go fight it separately you cannot do this thing of evicting somebody or you cannot do this thing of preventing your tenant from entering the house of which he has possession go deal with it lawfully do you understand how much the law supports you mm-hmm. absolutely yes yeah, yes yeah, yeah. you know only thing is most people don't have the confidence mm-hmm. 
if you are confident the law supports you that much even against your own landlord mm-hmm. yeah. so so stand firm stand firm mm-hmm. absolutely and again you um, earlier in the day you, you we had a conversation where saying last two months i'm here mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know abhi kya kar sakte hain jaane de why why two months is a long time mm-hmm. two months can be a very long time it's an entire summer vacation when we were back in school yeah that's true if you are going to let somebody ruin your entire summer vacation oh, why would you do that why would you be cowed down why would you have to dabke kyun chalna hai inke samne you don't have to you live your life like a tiger don't live it like a sheep you know you live every day like it matters you have a right to enjoy each and every day so don't say oh last one day last two days of my tenancy so i will not bring my friends why why will you not bring your friends normally a bachelor is single person like let's say traveling for work or mm. a student living in a different like i had this one uh, incident where uh, a relative mm. used to stay as a paying guest in someone's house mm. and he entered the living room and he sat in the living room turn on the fan and mm. the lights the landlord comes in and he's like you are supposed to only be you restricted to your room you should not be entering the living area that's not what you pay for Mm. so uh, some things like uh, these you know okay paying as uh, paying as arrangement is a little bit dicey it's a different animal mm-hmm. the difficulty with paying as is restrict you are giving him a room like for example i have a 2 bhk where i live with my family now suppose i run into economic difficulties mm-hmm. and i'm forced to earn my living by renting out one bedroom out of my two bedrooms Right. Okay, so that one bedroom is self-contained. It has its own bathroom. Mm-hmm. Now I rent out that one bedroom and its bathroom to a guest. Now it is assumed that the rest of the two rooms, along with my family, I am going to live in that. Okay, okay. but but is there any law? I mean, I don't know how it functions because nowadays uh, paying guests is a thing, Airbnb is a thing. so those sort of things which were not there in the past but now are there in the the new world right and uh, because of like so we we don't know i mean so air so the boundaries are not properly understood in some of mm-hmm. these uh, arrangements the boundaries are not very clear mm-hmm. the boundaries need to be clearly understood by both the parties mm-hmm. uh, encroachment of those boundaries by either party can lead to trouble so for example if the landlord comes mm-hmm. to your room because he has to dry his clothes mm-hmm. and his balcony is outside your room so wo kachcha sukhane ko udhar aata hai that is a boundary breach from the landlord mm-hmm. side or they keep right. knocking and disturbing you because they say bachche logon ko tv dekhna hai aapke room mein dekhne do na mm-hmm. you know anything like that so now there is a boundary breach from the side of the landlord now the landlord If these things happen mm-hmm. uh, but boundaries need to be very clear if you are uh, living in uh, paying guest accommodation mm-hmm. there may be families who are perfectly okay with you sitting at the dining table and sharing your day and they may even look forward to it right you know right. that depends on the family then it's a, i think based on mutual understanding and what your equation is with that family yeah uh, but it is a completely different scenario than renting out that whole apartment to someone and renting out just one room so absolutely those boundaries are yeah. very uh, like a border which you don't know how but when your uh, room when you have yeah. taken a house you have you have inherited each and every right of the right. house owner each and every mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. okay so okay. Uh, they they take a walk you take a walk sometimes club houses can turn into disputed areas mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i'm not getting into that because slightly gray area i feel mm-hmm. the tenant has a right to use the clubhouse also every right that goes with the yes house yes yes because at the end of the day you you have paid the deposit you yes. are paying the rent uh, you are abiding by all the uh, you know the like bylaws and uh, yes. whatever the law says and uh, you're not 
unless you're not causing any trouble to the, as right. you said the structure or other thing right here now let's say tomorrow foreigner comes to this particular premises and stays mm-hmm. here and these people start harassing you know a lady and a foreigner is very vulnerable very vulnerable yeah, and, and and the problem is the image of a country it's <laughs> so very distorted true it's true. Uh, very tarnished in true. the outside world they don't uh, the something like this is and they, they take that image with them even nri is are very vulnerable for example real estate when an nri buys real estate he is much more vulnerable than a typical indian right the law fails to protect him waise to koi bhi indian he is in the by he makes a bad deal in real estate he is uh, basically mm-hmm. swimming in very deep very dangerous waters with right. undercurrents that he cannot understand mm-hmm. uh, it's good mr rao that you highlighted uh, these prominent points which certainly uh, take that into consideration everything that you have mentioned right you need help call me definitely definitely thank you so much for okay. your time chalo take yeah. care all the best to you bye thanks